Hey folks, uh, Mr. MathBlog here, and this is another uh, multiple choice strategies for your AP st statistics exam. I had another video, and this is just kind of wrapping up some things I didn't get covered in there. So take a look at that one too. That one's got some good stuff in it. So uh, scoring on the on the multiple choice test, there's um, uh, five possible answers on each multiple choice question. Then there's 40 questions, and you're given 90 minutes, so that's going to give you a little bit over two minutes on each problem, roughly. So uh, there's no penalty on the exam for wrong answers, so you'll simply not get credit for these. So it's the same as if you just left them blank, so there's no penalty for guessing. So just make sure that you answer uh, all the questions. Don't leave any of them blank, you guys. You can just get, you can guess and hopefully get the right answer. You have a one in five chance. Uh, by just randomly guessing, and, and more chances than not, you can probably uh, eliminate some of the answers and take a great educated guess, okay? So first, uh, uh, find the questions that you know how to do, you guys. So um, uh, find all the questions that you're confident with, and you can work those uh, fast and first, and then return to the ones that you uh, can't do fast. Um, and try to find the content questions uh, first, you guys. Those are the ones that don't have calculations. They tend to go a little bit faster. They're just uh, uh, they're just testing your your knowledge on the content. You can identify these by their answers because the answers are non-numerical. Uh, they're verbal answers. Okay, so make sure you answer all the questions you know how to do first. Go through the test, answer those first, and uh, don't make the mistake that a lot of students still do. They start with question one, then they do question two, then question three, and diligently keep working until time runs out you know and, you, and so you, know, you might get to like question 25 and not finish the whole test so make a run through answer the ones you know how to do first uh, and then go back and uh, get the ones you can uh, take care of later you guys so uh, make a mark in your test booklet on the questions you're unsure of about then you can return to those questions later be sure be very sure that you skip those questions on your answer document as well okay so read each question carefully you just have over two minutes to answer each question, but you can't make the mistake of reading the questions too quickly. I do that sometimes, you guys, so we're just skimming over them. You have to read each question as careful as you can. So by doing this, uh, you may already have some idea about the correct answer, so you can save some time by looking for that correct answer right there. Okay, careful reading uh, is especially important in the questions that say accept or not. Okay, and we'll, I'll show you some examples of those in just a little bit. So you can eliminate any answers if you know um, uh, that they're wrong. So you can write in your multiple chess book, multiple. Um, you can write in your test booklet, you guys, on the multiple choice. So as you read through the responses, I like drawing lines through the answers that I know aren't correct. So this will help you in choosing the correct answer. At least narrow down your guessing, you guys. So if you can eliminate a couple of answers, then instead of guessing one and five, you're guessing one and three that's a great um, uh, strategy so read each response then choose the most accurate one sometimes there's a few answers that seem like they're correct but one of them is more specific and therefore there's uh, the more of the correct answer so they're testing your precise knowledge of the subject so try to avoid absolute responses if you see words like always or never they're absolutes and so they're more often than not they're incorrect responses not all the time but more often than not they are so so for example you might you may see something like the the data are normal well that's an absolute answer the word are right there instead look for the phrase something like uh, the data appear to be approximately normal see how that's uh, not absolute so mark and skip the tough questions so remember each problem is worth the same so don't get all tied up on one question because uh, you're wasting good time uh, to answer some of the questions that you might be able to answer later so uh, I will try to go through the test and get the ones you can do first so Mark the problem in your test booklet and come back to it later, making sure you skip that question on your answer document, okay? So I know I've said that before because it's important, you guys. So towards the end of the test, make sure that you go back and answer all the questions. Make sure you're keeping the time uh, when your um, uh, 40 minutes is up. I'm sorry, your 90 minutes is up of your 40 questions, your hour and a half. So make sure that you're going to answer all of them, you guys, so there's no penalty for guessing. So type some multiple choice questions on the AP exam. So the classic one is, is to find the best answer. So this is the most common type of multiple choice question. It simply requires you to read the question and select the correct answer. So for example, a school board wants to determine if the proportion of students who are satisfied with their school is greater than the uh, 0.52 under the previous principle. Which of the following hypothesis tests of the board 
test. Okay, so we're going to choose the best answer. I'm going to eliminate these two choices because it's talking about proportion, not the mean. So these ones are mean, so those ones are gone. Okay, and then uh, I can eliminate that one right there because the null hypothesis is always written with an equal sign. So the one here where the null hypothesis was greater, that's toast. Okay, now I just got to look for it. it says greater than, so I want my alternative hypothesis to be greater than, so it's choice B on that, okay? Easy enough, all right? So examples of the Roman numeral type, you guys. So here's one with Roman numerals. So which of the following statements accurately applies to the box plots uh, shown at the left, okay? So if you just kind of, you know, before we go through all of this, look at the choices right here. Can you see these choices have uh, in common? A lot of them have ones and fours. In fact, all of them except one of them has a four. So let's go down and look at uh, Roman numeral four. It says the first quartile for set A, the first quartile is right here, is greater than the median for set B. Well, here's the median for set B. Well, that's not true, you guys. So since that's not true, then um, uh, all these ones that have four in it can't be true. So just by process of elimination, it's that guy right there. And you can read the other choices one and two and find out they're true. Okay, process of elimination. So a research team wants to find out if freshmen or seniors are happier at their high school. So they designed a happy test to assign to each student a happy score from 1 to 100. Which of the following would be an appropriate method to test the hypothesis that freshmen or seniors are equally happy? Okay, well I can cross off those two because the, uh, these, uh, uh, this has two sets of data, not one set of data, so I wouldn't do a one proportion Z test or T test, okay? I can get rid of the Z test because Z test means we know the standard deviation. Um, well, so uh, so I'll get rid of that in just a second. But now I can guess, you guys. If I if I could if I didn't know anything else on that, I could I could at least guess on one and three instead of one and um, uh, five. Okay. So a Z test uh, means you know the standard deviation, and we don't. So um, and match pair test uh, uses two measurements on each uh, respondent. So here they're only taking one measurement, so it's uh, choice D. Okay. So uh, accept or not questions. So an accept or not style questions, you'll notice that all the answer choices are, uh, but one of them are correct. So only one of them is false, you guys. So I like to treat these as true false questions. Mark a T or an F next to each possible possibility. And um, uh, there should only be one example. Okay, so sorry I had to write a little bit small. Researchers were interested in comparing students at a private university and students at a public university with respect to how much time they spent working in a typical week. They emailed a survey of 1,000 students enrolled at a particular private university and 2,000 enrolled at a particular public university. Data from the 400 private university students who responded to the survey and 900 public stu university students who responded to the survey was used to determine uh, that there was a significant difference in the mean number of hours worked in a typical week. So which of the following does not limit the researcher's ability to generalize the two populations? Okay, so we'll go through all these. So the two samples are of, of not equal sizes. So, well, that's true, you guys, but is that going to limit their ability to generalize uh, this one? So this one's false right here, I think, because it's not going to limit that, you guys. So if you just go through, you can find out uh, this one's false. There may be bias introduced to non-response. Yeah, well, there sure is a bias because uh, maybe only the non-working people uh, responded. Uh, the samples were not randomly selected. Well, that's true. All students in the private university sample attended the same university. And all students in the public university attended the same university. Well, that could limit the research abilities because maybe the private, there wasn't any um, uh, jobs available or something. Okay, so... So I get uh, choice A on this because if samples are chosen in a reasonable way, having the samples of different sizes should not be a problem, you guys. Choices B, C, and D uh, point to problems uh, with the, which ways the samples were selected, okay? So here's another example. Uh, the following can be said about a well-designed, uh, completely randomized experiment, except a cause and effect relationship can be determined. A control must be used. I think that's true. Uh, replication is essential in a component. I think that's true also. A placebo is necessary. Uh, I think that one's false. And randomization is used to assign the subjects of experimental units to treatment groups. Okay, So um, a well-designed experiment includes randomization, replication, and control. Okay, It's the only way to show a cause and effect relationship. So this one's true. This one's true. This one's true. This one's true, so the only one that's false is uh, D. 
Um, we don't need um, uh, the placebo is not an essential feature in a well-designed experiment, okay? All right, if you find these uh, videos are helpful, please click like. Uh, and if you find they're unhelpful, then please click dislike. Otherwise, take care, everybody.